everyone welcome to Baldur's Gate 3. I normally don't like playing long-form RPGs on this channel simply because I like to take my time with RPGs but I figured it's early access there's only a handful of hours in the early access so might as well give it a go yeah I'm actually excited to, to try this out I've never really done an RPG as a let's play to have it recorded and it's gonna be interesting to see what it's like to, to edit this thing at any rate let's let's get on with it Oh, and uh, full disclosure, I have played this before um, when it was first released, but that was many months ago, and there have been a ton, a ton of updates since then. So I'm excited to see what they've added. I'm excited to see what they've changed, and um, let's just get on with it. Looks beautiful. That's like one thing I could never get over about this game. It's just, it's a gorgeous game. All right, so let's get to it. Oh my God, you don't have to scream it at me. And that's it, I'm done. This is my, this is my halfling guy. My little halfling. So my name is January, so that's my character name. For background, I've chosen Guild Artesian because I think it just balances well with this character. I mean, I don't think these backgrounds really matter right now since it is early access. I mean, there might be there might be some like checks or some uh, character dialogue that's specific here, but for the most part, because this is early access, there's not much to it right now. I'm just gonna go with Guild Artesian. Uh, it gives you insight, proficiency, persuasion, and proficiency, very good traits. Also, I'm using a lot of knowledge that I have of just Dungeons and Dragons uh, 4E and 5E. And I think they, I think that knowledge still translates well with Boulder's Gate 3, from what I experienced um, when I first played this. I mean, if it serves me, if it serves me well, insight and persuasion proficiency are very good traits. So I chose halfling because, I mean, <laughs> look, elves and stuff. Like, not gonna lie, elves and half elves, they're overrated. Everyone plays them. They get boring. I mean, everybody loves them. It's like they're supposed to be rare people, but everyone plays them, so like they're common. I don't know. Like I have this thing against elves. <laughs> I just I just feel like it's not it's not worth playing it as an elf. I don't you know they're too good as a race and um, human pretty basic. Uh, I actually when I when I play D and D in real life, I actually play as either human or tiefling, and I'm not going tiefling this time around because. Um, so I kind of like to play myself in these kind of RPG games and there is like, there's like no Asian faces for Tiefling. So <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'll pass. But you know what? Like I've played Tiefling, I've played D&D for almost like 10 years now. And I've always played Tiefling or Human as a Warlock, a Hexblade Warlock typically. And, uh, I, you know, I don't need to play Tiefling now. I mean, I can always play Tiefling, you know, next time and stuff. But for this playthrough... Not gonna choose Tiefling. Too familiar with it. Want to try something different. I was thinking of going Drow, um, only because you know there's so much like there's so much lore to them, 
uh, in general and it's it's really fun to play like a race that's different and discriminated upon and to see how the world reacts to you I always find that fascinating and I mean they borrow all the faces from like elf and high elf so you could choose like one of the one of the two Asian faces. Let me let's let's just check it out. Yeah, I mean they have this face, but you look like a handsome K-pop star. I don't look like that in real life. I look disgusting as hell. Then you have this other Asian face, and I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pass. <laughs> All these faces are too generic. You're gonna be playing an RPG game that focuses on what you look like for the entire time. You got to be comfortable with what you look like, right? So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna play uh, either a drow. I'm not gonna play a drow, not gonna play a tiefling, not gonna play a halfling, I mean a uh, elf. Get the Yankee, I was like, no, nah, I've never, I, you know, I'm just not interested. May I may though, like in other playthroughs that I do alone, that's not Let's Plays, I might try these other races. There was dwarf, but I mean, everybody loves a dwarf. Everyone plays dwarf, so I was like, nah, but what about halflings? Like how many people legit play halflings? I'm a short guy, you know, I'm actually 5'6", well, my friends say I'm 5'6", but one time I went to the doctors and they said I was like 5'4 during a checkup, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm a halfling, I'm a short guy, I'm a short dude. This is not an Asian face as you can imagine, but he's the closest I can make to look like me. So <laughs> I was like, you know, it works. He's short, I'm short, you know, he can't be Asian, but hey, he's short and that is a distinguished feature of my person so I was like there you go but you know what I feel like that's just a problem in general whenever you kind of make these when you translate tabletop games into a digital video game right like there's only so many uh variables they can consider whereas when you play a tabletop game you have the opportunity to describe yourself and all that kind of stuff but um you just have to do what you got to do in a, in, a, in a video game when I first played this I believe I was tiefling I want to say it was Tiefling. God, I have, I have a crap memory. At any rate, I've never played this all the way through as a halfling, so this will be a lot of fun. So, for Lightfoots, they are uh, they're good with they have Lucky. So whenever you roll a one, you can roll you can roll again. You can re-roll. Dexterity plus two. Uh, we have Naturally Stealthy, and then we have the distance you can move per turn is 25 feet. And then Charisma plus one, which is great because we're gonna go Warlock Hexblade. Um, I actually don't know. I don't think you can do that at level four. Can you? I'm not remembering my D&D &D 5e that well anymore. <laughs> but, um, yeah, charisma matters for warlocks, so that's a good thing. Let's go to... Oh, I'm on appearance, so let's go to class. I'm choosing the great old one for no real particular reason other than it's thematic. You know, the other one is fiend, but, uh, you don't really get into these subclasses that much because you're only up to level four, right? Um... They're, they'll probably uh, truncate a lot of the abilities and the levels. I think they said they might try to cap you out or soft cap you at 10. So we might see some abilities leak in earlier than we would if we were playing this, you know, straight D&D. &D. Yeah, so I'm just doing the great old one. It's thematic. And when I used to play D&D uh, &D before, I used to always choose the Fiend. So just switching it up. Just switching it up from real life, you know? All right, so this, these are my skills. Inherited skills is Stealth, Insight, Persuasion, really, really good. But Investigation and Insight, those are really good traits to just, you know, investigate and to Insight. Arcana, I feel like might be useful. And uh, if I could, I already have Persuasion and Persuasion and Intimidation are pretty much the same thing in ways of trying to coerce someone there. They're pretty much the same. So I feel like I already have Persuasion because of Guild Artesian. Don't really need intimidation um yeah but they, and they both go they both go off of charisma charisma as i like to say and that's pretty much my character oh yeah i think i didn't show you my ability so for cantrips i chose chill touch for um if they ever uh get close to me you can use chill touch and then we have eldritch blast for distance attacks this is your, this is your main weapon actually the eldritch blast so you know what yeah, Chill Touch is actually a ranged attack, range 50, 60 feet. Yeah, well, actually, we'll just do Mage Hand. Because, you know, I need help uh, grabbing things from the top shelf, okay? Uh, for spells, I've chosen uh, Hex because, of course, you, this is not Hex. Did this change? Oh, no. No, no, no. Hex is really good because you can cast it on a creature, and they take additional 1d6 necrotic damage whenever you hit them, and the creature also has disadvantage on other ability checks of your choosing. So, yeah, it's just really, really cool to, to sort of open up with Hex. Uh, Charm Person, it's more of a control thing, you know? Like, I just want to um, have the ability uh, to control the battlefield. 
A charmed creature can't harm the charmer. Yeah, and the charmer has advantage on charisma checks against that creature. So yeah, it's, it's just a good way to, to stop or stun, in my opinion. Uh, what else I want to show you? And these are my assigned ability points. So this was at uh, this was at eight, which is a negative one to strength. I figured, you know, I'll just balance it, put it at ten. Dex is going to be fifteen. So if I want to level up again, I'll get a plus three. Uh, Constitution, 13, is a plus one. Most of my abilities don't go off of con, right? Or at all, I don't think. Yeah, so I mean, con is just for HP and all that kind of stuff. Uh, intelligence, this will just help with skill checks, so it's just a plus one. I removed uh, it from, I removed the ability points from here and then put it into strength just to have a, a zero there. And then charisma, you know, you're capped at 16 actually, so it's a plus three at this point. Uh, really good stuff, it's, it's your main, it's my main ability point. So it's charisma, uh, dexterity, constitution, and then intelligence, and then these can just be tens. But that is my guy, January, Lightfoot Halfling Warlock subclass, the Great One, proficiencies in Stealth, Arcana, Investigation, Insight, and Persuasion, and then Eldritch Blast, uh, Mage Hand, Hex, and Choim Poison. Let's venture for. Tell me, who do you dream of at night? Oh, I totally forgot this. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, this is, this is, uh, I don't know. Okay, so who do you dream of? Who attracts you? Um, well, first off, she has to be tall because she has to reach for things that I cannot reach for. Um, so let me just take care of this real quick. Okay, so I actually don't know what this is. My first playthrough, I never ran into the, uh, the, this character. So, um, I don't know if this is just put in here because it's like a later thing. But uh, this is, I guess, who I dream of. Uh, she's tall enough to grab things from the high shelf. She can carry me if my feet get tired. That's it. That's this is this is her. Uh, I don't think you give her a name. Do you give There's her a voice? There's magic keeping this chest sealed. I can. Uh, what? Let's give her this one. What was that? Just because it's different. Uh, yeah, and that's this is pretty much her. All right, let's let's do this. Let's go forth now. Can you imagine what it's like to even be in this city? Or like, for my character right now. Like, watching this alien. Essentially, they're like aliens, these, these elder creatures. Abduct us. So gnarly. And like, if you're the king, mayor, or governor of that city-state, how do you even protect yourself from something like that? You know what? I might even play Githyanki next time, just to ride a dragon. I think that'd be cool. Or at least have a background story of being a dragon rider. What I wish they want they would add those gnomes.
this music is so badass. I can never get over it. Like the the creativity behind like all of this is just so much fun to watch, you know? Especially if you're like a D and D fan. It's almost like your imagination become material. Alrighty, so if you're also wondering how my character got here, in case this is your first time watching this, um, that isn't really, uh, explored oh, right now. So there just, there just isn't, um, much background, uh, for your character just yet. Where the hells are we? Um, also, I just realized this a couple of days ago when I did play this, was that there's treasure up here! Uh, potion, fire resistance for healing. You know, this is what, what kind of uh, irked me about like real D&D too. is that potions, you have to roll for it. And in this game, they, they kept that. <laughs> it's, it's, that's kind of annoying, but hey, I mean, you want to keep true to it. You do what you got to do. And this is fire resistance, so take that. Like, how come you don't get to roll for fire resistance, but you have to roll for healing? But anyways. Anyways, causatic bulb creates a puddle of causatic brine that deals a, a d4, 1d4 of acid damage per toin. Softs the touch covered with a thin layer of colorless slime. We take that. Um, in my, you know, I need to beat Divinity Original Sin as well, but in kind of loot based RPG kind of games, you just collect everything because whatever you don't use, uh, you might be able to use for crafting, and if you can't use it for crafting, at the very least, you can sell it. Grease bottle creates a flammable grease surface that is difficult, uh, that is difficult terrain, uh, and can cause characters to fall prone. The pale sludge within this bottle doesn't pour easily, oozing out in fatty clumps instead. Disgusting. Also very useful. Alchemist fire. It's basically your Molotov cocktail. Uh, deals 1d4 fire damage per turn to any creature it hits. Shapes swirl and glow behind the glass. Liquid embers folding into and around each other. This alchemist fire, uh, we used to use that a lot when I used to play D&D. &D. Uh, when I used to DM uh, my friends, I used to always give them Molotov cocktails. Alchemist fire, aka alchemist fire, just because they're so much fun to use. Especially like when they th when they screw up like a throw, <laughs> like a roll for a throw. So much fun just to cause enough chaos, you know. Um, let's see, I, there were two chests. I actually, yeah, I, I just saw this two days ago uh, about those chests, and I was like, oh my god, is that new? Or was I just blind to that the whole time? Got an autosave going off. Yeah, one of these, one of the reasons why. Someone else got out. Okay, see, these are just other pods that. Yeah. One of the reasons, too, why I don't normally um, play RPGs or long-form RPGs on this channel, or want to... This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Uh, investigation. Uh, yeah, so one of the reasons why I kind of was uneasy of playing this kind of long-form long RPG on this channel was because, you know, I do actually save scum, and... It's inconsistent, because sometimes I'll take failures, sometimes I won't. And yeah, it's just a weird thing that <laughs> that I do. Because also it's like, I don't want to keep uh, replaying, you know, 60 hours and 60 hours for each different character. And I'm just like, you know what? I'll just have the one character and then reroll something or reload something that I don't like for a certain outcome. And sometimes I also get confused, like it isn't clear what the outcome can be. And I make a judgment call and it turns out to be the wrong one, but I didn't intend it to be that one. You know, so like like I misread something in that in that way, so that's why sometimes I save scum, and you know that's why I was like, you know, what? I'm never gonna play an RPG on this channel. But long behold, here we are with our first roll, and it's a four. Oh my god! Uh, roll again. You notice nothing more than meets the eye. Granted, granted, uh, no save scumming it's for this casing time. casing crumbles beneath your hands. Sloshing volatile brine as it <laughs> Look at his face. That, that is me in a nutshell. That's me against life. Whoa! 
four damage. What I love too is I love how low your HP number is here. It's just so reminiscent of like real D&D. Where like one hit and you kind of want to tear up and find some more to hide. <laughs> because you're so scared of dying. Um, let's see. Let's check out this Mind Flare. There's these things here. These Restoration Pods. You just go in there and they'll heal you. So we're not too worried about that. Spiked Bulb. A sticky sap-like substance trickles down spikes of this bulb. Not sure what this does. Dead. Good. But we're taking it. We're taking it. Uh, let's move up here. Just want to make sure we got everything. So if you don't know, you can actually hold Alt and it will tell you. Not all the time. I've actually noticed this sometimes for some items and that's because it's early access. But if you hold Alt, it should show you uh, what is around you that is notable. All right, let's just restore our health. Odd. I feel better. It isn't described what these things are just yet, lore-wise, but again, it's early access, so uh, plan for that in later months. Like this... No, wait, hold on. That's not a good example. Hollow Shell. So you can actually take this item, so this is what I mean. I'm holding... Right. So I'm holding Alt, and it's showing me these imps that I can loot. They're dead bodies. But it's not showing this, which is a Hollow Shell, which you can pick up, which I will pick up. So let's go ahead and read this. Uh, where is it? The inside of a shell is smooth and hard like colored glass. I don't know what these do. You know, uh, again, like I haven't really pursued much of this. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. I haven't really done much of this in earnest since uh, that my first playthrough. Devil so. Am I in the hells? Again, and my reason for it was just because like, a lot of these characters I was just not excited for. Like, they were so abrasive, so, like, in your face, and, like, whatever about you. And I was just like, okay, if this is supposed to be in the spirit of D&D, definitely not having a good time. <laughs> I was like, I cannot wait till you can pro uh, progress further in the story, where you can just, like, ditch them and never use them again. But, then I read on an update that they actually changed some of the character dialogue and they rework some characters. So I'm kind of interested to see Faint how they turn out. images appear in your mind. A brain, a gith Yankee warrior, and centuries of darkness. A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. So I have a, I have a gauntlet grabbing thing here. Can I take this? <gasps> a brain in a jar. I took it. Uh, dark mind, a humanoid brain alive in perfect condition, suspended in cerebral fluid. Oh, dope. Okay. I don't know if it prompted me that it was an item that I could pick up, but if it didn't, that's one of the instances where holding alt will not show you that item. Um, they turned this into an elevator really funny because before it was just like a, a weird platform that took you up here. But anyways, we're going to go to it right now. This is, oh, this is just an apparatus to call down the elevator. Let me just save real quick because I'm not gonna save scum. Promise. It's just uh, whenever you do let's plays, you gotta save. You gotta save every off, every so often. All right, let's go up. I mean, I might save scum. You don't know. You don't know. It's my playthrough, not yours. Uh, let's see. A uh, chest back here. Let's grab that first. Wait. Oh, there's two chests up here. Yes, coming, coming, Manith. Let's see. Uh, let's grab this gold. Twenty-three gold. Really cool. Really cool. And let's grab this chest. Cosmetic bulbs, three of them. A pool of brine, yeah, that's acid, and then a spiked bulb. I'm glad they don't do like D and D currency, which actually has copper and so I don't know. Actually, do they? I think it's just gold. Yeah, simplify the math, people. Party gold. Yeah. yeah. This is so gnarly. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please, before they return. They return. I, never get, I can never get over like how gnarly like this brain stuff is and like the body horror that they've gone for in this in this game. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you sound afraid. I think you're, uh... Who am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. 
Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer, a minion of the mind flares who abducted you. So, um, yeah, that Arcana check really came in useful there, right? Which is funny because, like, in real tabletop D&D, &D, I mean, if you've played D&D &D before, uh, I don't know how many, how often you use Arcana checks, but it was one of those skills that whenever I ran a D or whenever I DM'd or had one of my friends DM'd and did their stories, it was always one of those skills we always kind of forgot existed, and we would just roll perception or roll investigation. Silly thing there. Anyways, I think you're past uh, the point of saving. Tell me what to do. You sound afraid. Why destroy the brain? I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Please. Um, also, my character's accent is ambiguously idiotic. So that is what I'm going for here. My choice is just always angry. Look at that stern face. I'm just, I'm just upset. I'm upset to be have taken. I'm, I'm upset to be here. Not having a great time. Um, we're gonna investigate. Come on. What I would like in future, and of course it's very early access, but what I would like is if they showed you the pluses. Like, um, I believe I have a plus one to investigation, and I would like to see that vision. Oh, oh, it does show you. Oh, it does show me. Okay, so I'm a proficient. So this is what I don't understand. Do they add the plus three then? So you, it says at the bottom, details, plus one from intelligence, because I'm at 12, and then a plus two for because I'm proficient with it. But I don't know if when you roll the dice, like for example, if you get uh, a four, right? Is that including the plus three? Or is that calculated after? Because normally like when you play this in real life, you know, you, 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 do, you do your dice roll, then you add, in this case it would be three, but when we roll here... See, is that is that 18? Is that a hard 18? Is that a flat 18? You notice edema, a swelling of the brain causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. Please, before they return! They return. I'm smug and now I'm angry? What's wrong with me? Uh, medicine, attempt a cerebral extraction, staying mindful of the swelling. Interest. Um, advantage. Okay, so we're gonna go dex because I don't have anything for uh, medicine. That would be it'd be a straight d20 roll, and just strength is just straight d20. So let's go dex because we get the plus two. Again, I don't know if it's added to the die or if it's subtracted from the target. Oh, it is. Okay, it is. So the target roll is 10. The check is 10, minus 2, 8. Okay, cool. Got it now. No! Ooh! Uh-oh. Is it die? Oh, God. <laughs> is, that, that is my definition of gentle, my stubby, fat hands. The brain won't budge okay well can i do destroy the brain uh uh be it be at peace brain be at peace yikes that is brutal why am i smiling i'm sick i'm sadistic i'm si oh boy he had to glitch out like sorting options. Oh, cool. Let's do by let's do by value. Hopefully that sticks for everyone else. Toggle inventory. Oh. Oh, these are these are nice. Oh, that's nice. I'm I'm, I'm taking it back about some of the new features here. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. That way I can read what I took instead of just picking it up and then hitting I. That's cool. All right. Uh what what else has changed? We have jump. I believe jump is automatic now, right? And then here, let me let me switch some of these things. Crazy though. Um, couldn't get it, folks. Couldn't get it. See, this is what I mean. Like, um, I wouldn't go back there and change the dice roll, right? I wouldn't save scum there. But in other instances, I would. So I'm like uber inconsistent, <laughs> and that's why I was like, no, nah, I can't have this as a lead supply. I simply cannot because people are gonna be like, "Oh, what are you doing? You're so inconsistent. You don't have any kind of rules that you follow. You're you're lawless. You're a lawless boy." And I tell them, "Don't talk down to me." All right, can I jump this without? Um, because I think I saw that as an update. Was that you can actually click this, 
No, never mind. Never mind. Is or maybe there's a key. Uh, no, I don't know. A key bind. All right, let's meet these characters now. Got to have another autosave going. Abomination. This is your end. Everyone's talking down to me. And your skin Stop talking down to me. Visions rush past. Respect me, a it's a person. Wing, a silver sword. And a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh, my head. What is this? Squaw. You are no thrall. Flakith blesses me this day. Together. We might survive. Imps block the path forward. You will assist me in destroying them. We must reach the helm before we transform. Transform? What do you mean? We carry Mind Flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. Within days, we will be Geich, Mind Flayers. Oh no. There must be something we can do. Who are you? Uh, let's let's go. Who are you? Who am I? Yeah. Your only chance of survival. Okay. And you mine, though it pains me to say it. Okay. Uh, we're not doing names, although I know it already. Uh, mine. There must be something that we can do. You and I. We must be able to do something about we this. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. So I'm just humoring her just to hit up all these uh, dialogue, you know, choices in case it all matters at the end. Uh, the helm is our is our way out of here? Question mark. It is where we might gain control of the Ga'arth, the ship. Once in command, we will deal with our Gaith captors. How do you know this? I feel like you're just making stuff up now. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Okay. Um, so in case you were wondering there, that brain thing, um, because I'm not going to go back and, and save scum there, it actually turns into a creature that can help us. It turns into a little companion. I mean, how long it helps us for, I have no clue. But yeah, it would have been like a third companion. Alright, so this is new. We have a tutorial this time before you just sort of had to wing it. But we have combat turns, your turn order. This looks much more simplified, which is great because, oh man, before it was so, there was just so much information here. So a uh, roll of a die to turn, uh, decides your turn order. This is called initiative and is influenced by your dex. Uh, actions, your ability, your available actions are highlighted. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, bonus actions, so these are all your bonus actions. Uh, you can perform at top of your normal actions. The movement bar show much how much, shows how much distance you can cover. Yeah, which is this uh, gold bar here. Am I frozen still? Oh, I'm like stuck in place here for some unscrutable reason. All right, um, I should should be okay though when I start moving. Uh, yeah, so let us... I'll just sort of move this way. I'm gonna go ahead and use hex. Hex is a standard, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a normal action. It's a bonus action, cool. Too far. Um, all right, so we're getting closer. Not my favorite thing as a warlock, but we must do what we must do. Let's go ahead and hex. Oh! Oh, this is what that means. Oh, okay, so this is where you get to choose a kind of hex. I didn't know that before. You know what they need to do? They need to actually change the symbol here. Like, you know how you see that? You vaguely see a handshake that's highlighted in purple? They need to color code this. They need to match the, the color code for like the handshaking and the scribe here and the book. They need to match it with the ability score colors if, if they have a, a uniform color, but that's, that's what they need to do here because this looks so, when I first saw this, it just looked like six random hearts and i was like why do you have six of them okay whatever but here you get to choose which hex to inflict them with so i'm gonna go ahead and it's a melee character so i'm gonna go ahead and use strength i'm gonna affect its strength rolls 
and then I'm gonna go hit it with Eldritch Blast. That might actually kill it. Oh, it did it. Okay, cool. Uh, let's uh, finish. Wait, is she not an initiative? Is she not in here? Oh, no, I have to end my turn manually. That's right. Um, yeah, sure. All right, her turn. Melee and ranged. Uh, use a melee weapon for enemies that are near you. Okay, yeah, range for far away. Oh, the toggle. Oh, cool. I can't remember if it was like this before. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, scroll over to 5. We got Potion of Healing. She has Mage Hand herself, which is great. And then second win to draw stamina to protect herself. You regain 1d10 plus 1 hit points. In a rest. All right, so let's go ahead and move her here. Then we're going to toggle weapons and have her fire here. Pretty cool. I didn't even know she came with a bow. That must be an addition, her coming with a bow. I, I don't think she had a bow before. I think we had to find that before. Wait, switching? You can do this on... Is this like a free action? Inner rest. All right, well, we better... I mean, I don't know if this holds to D&D &D rules, but in D&D, &D, if you had, like, your, uh, your bow out and stuff like that, you couldn't really... Uh, opportunity attack if someone was near you. I, I, I would imagine the same applies now. Oh, you only did one damage? Yikes. All right. Let us reapply the hex. Sure. Why not? You are melee, I think? You haven't moved at all. You're not really holding a weapon. Um, you know, let's, let, let's not. Yeah, because, I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of damage. Um, okay, I guess we can apply the, apply the hex now. So I would imagine you use dex for that bow. Let's go ahead and hit you with that. Out of sight. Can I move? Can I move, though? Let's move. Uh, let's hit out. I don't know what the cancel selection is. Um, okay. Let's go here. Maybe I, I don't think I have sight on him. Let's go ahead and use dex. Yeah, he's out of sight. He's out of sight. All right, so let's just enter. Yeah, that, that's fine. Totes, totes fine. Not enough movement, so we're actually just going to move her here and then finish it off with the bow. Ooh! You know, I'm like, uh, my character's like super stressed out right now and doesn't know what's happening because he's never killed anything before, so he's like, oh my god! Oh my god! That was a waste. I should have hit with Eldritch Blast, but um, I'm, I'm role-playing. Um, this is his RP. This is my RP. Oh my god! I believe I can move away, right? Yeah. See, that's what I mean. I can move away from him, from his target area, because he has a crossbow out. Or she. I don't know if imps have a gender. Let's end turn. Ooh. Totally fine, though, because the restoration pod is right there. So let's just finish it off now. Please do some damage. One damage. You proved surprisingly adequate in battle. Thank you. No. To the helm. That is the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Not now. We must go to the helm. Okay, I'm just trying to get more lore out of you. <sighs> Control over the ship. Or do you wish to die here? No, I just wanted lore. Now that I know that we are we are busy, we can proceed. All right, uh, let's let's loot everything. The, I I think they still need a better way of doing this whole loot thing here. Oh, a crossbow. Yeah, for me, yes. I need this. Can I pick up add to wares? Equip. Can I equip this? Like as a secondary? Oh, that's so cool. I, I think I am proficient with it, right? Um, that's the one thing about uh, warlocks, though, is that they don't have that many proficiencies for melee, obviously, right? Because they are warlocks, but let's see. Can I use this? I must be proficient in this because I have pinned down as a bonus attack with this on. And also, I'll be interested how they handle the Hexblade as well. Again, I don't know if you can get the Hexblade right now in, in Boulder's Gate, in this early access of Boulder's Gate 3. But I will be interested to see how they do it because Hexblades, you know, you have your weapon manifested in your hand. Uh, Void Bulb uh, creates a force that pulls all nearby unfixed items. The numerous suction cups in this ball expand and constrict rhythmically as if breathing. They latch onto anything they can get a hold of. So these are just like grenades and stuff that have different effects. Uh, potion of speed. Gain haste for three turns. Again, not really stuff that I will probably ever use, but... Uh, void bulbs, causatic bulb, potion of healing. But it's always good to get all the loot here. You want to check everything. But this is what I mean by they, I hope they... They maybe change some of this here. Like, if you were to... Wasteland 3 had a really good idea, which is if you click 
if you loot one body, it'll actually open up and... Ooh, a hand axe. Can I wield a hand axe? Let me see. Let me take this first, and then I'll check it later. But, um, yeah, Wasteland 3 had a really cool thing going where if you opened up, like, the pockets of one thing... Oh, I didn't check this person? I must have. It doesn't say empty. If you opened up the, the pockets of one, of one body, then it opened up the surrounding bodies as well. So it was like you could loot all in one, which is really cool. I believe that's in Wasteland 3, yeah. Let's see... Uh... Okay, yeah, let's check out that axe. Can I use it? I forget how to check if you're proficient or not with it. So I can't tell if uh, I'm proficient with this hand axe. What is it? It's just a regular melee weapon? Is it, like, what is it? Okay, so probably just proficient with light. So let's go ahead and change that. Yeah, there you go. We're dual wielding. We're dual wielding! Dual wielding hex blade. Well, not really hex blade, but warlock. Warlock. Moving on. Oh boy, the camera's being weird. Look how scared I am. What's happening? Why is this happening to me? This isn't right. This isn't real! Oh, did I just fall? And now I'm back up. 